we're going to do a proper session on the Prosecco Rosé. All right, welcome back to Drinking It In. I am your host, Chris Cassara, and we are here to help you know more and drink better. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the hijinks uh, from the parking lot of the Slipknot concert, where I was trying to uh, get some folks, get the Slipknot fans to uh, tailgate with some Prosecco Rosé. In particular, this one, the Sa Ferlan Prosecco Rosé. Uh, which, by the way, is a 2020 vintage. Um, didn't get many takers. Um, most of the gentlemen there said that, uh, you know, my wife drinks Prosecco, but I, I'm not going to touch this stuff. Um, you know, and while we talked about the wine a little bit, I thought it was worth uh, really diving somewhat deep on what is a new category, a uh, new official category. So, Prosecco, as you all know, right? It's uh, the lovely, bubbly Italian uh, sparkling wine from the from the uh, you know Prosecco region, or from the Benito, but from the from the Prosecco region in Italy. And um, recently, I think it was uh, in the middle of last year, middle of 2020, they uh, the consortium uh, officially approved rosé as a DOC, right? So. Rosé Prosecco is not new necessarily, right? Winemakers have always been, you know, making some sort of rosé wine and putting whatever red grapes they wanted into the blend. But um, I guess the consortium thought that, you know what, let's make it an official you know, category and, um, you know, put some rules around it so we can have some structure and bring something new to the consumers in, you know, in the world. I, for one, am very excited about it, right? I, we, we've been drinking Prosecco Rosé for the last like six months. I didn't even realize that it was a, you know, official, an official change. I just thought, oh, well, you know, it's some pink Prosecco, great. So in this case, the, um, or in the, in the case of Prosecco Rosé, as I pour wine all over the table, um, no, no, okay, good. It's a safe pour. So the, there are some rules, I guess, that are assigned, uh, you know, as part of, in order to, you know, be able to carry the, you know, Prosecco doc uh, band and to be able to put the DOC on your label, right? You have to um, make the wines in a certain way. Uh, I think keep them in the, um, in the tanks for six months. You have to use at least 85% of the Glera grape, which, um, you know, at times had been named, known as the Prosecco grape. Now it's gone back to the, the Galera grape. And you can, while you can still obviously use red grapes in the blend, you can only use Pinot Noir as that red grape, and you can only go up to 15% in Pinot Noir. So at least 85% Galera, up to 15% Pinot Noir. I've seen stuff on this wine that says it's 84% Galera and 16% Pinot Noir, but don't tell anybody. Um, but I'm not sure if that's official or if that's just something somebody uh, got somewhere and maybe misspoke. Um, so, you know, I think it's, um, it provides some structure and uh, I'm looking forward to some of the wines that are going to come out of this region. Now, if you've been with me um, for a while, you've seen the Sa Ferlan Prosecco um, on the channel before, right? In this case, this is the Rosé Cuvée Mariana. Um, in the past, I've reviewed the Cuvée Beatrice, which is their flagship um, Prosecco, which is one of the best values in sparkling wine. Forget about Prosecco, one of the best values in sparkling wine anywhere. So I'll actually, um, I'll link a video up here just um, so you can, you can see that, um, dive into that. But, and this guy is no different. This wine is fantastic. Uh, great quality there. And, um, you know, like I said, I look forward to seeing a lot more from these guys. Safralan Prosecco Rosé Millesimato 2020. Vintage 2020. I do tend to swirl my sparkling wine. It's just a habit with any wine. Um, I've been told you shouldn't be doing that. Let me know in the comments if you, uh, if I'm breaking rules, if you do the same or if you just don't uh, swirl your sparkling wine. So immediately, what I get when I um, when I smell this wine is a is a red fruit bouquet, strawberries, 
primarily if I had to pinpoint one fruit. There's a bit, um, and there's a bit of a floral component to this. So I guess you would kind of expect it, right? Pinot Noir, some red fruit, you know, a little um, floral note makes sense. I don't smell really much. I don't smell any citrus, which typically I get in Proseccos, right? Whether that's, you know, lemons, limes, even some, some tangerine, but let's see what it tastes like. I mean, just like a lot of Proseccos, it's really clean. It's easy to drink. It's got just the right amount of bubbles. This one got some tart acidity on it. Very cool. So you kind of get, it evolves into more of a, a little bit of a bitter lemon um, in addition to some of that red fruit when, you're, when it's on the palate. And let's be honest, this stuff is way, way too easy to drink. It is... 11% ABV. So, you know, be careful with this stuff. You can drink a lot of it um, without really even feeling it. Um, I think it's a really good start for the Prosecco Rosé category. Um, I look forward to exploring it a lot more. I look forward to more Safran wines in my future, and I hope you do too. Do me a favor. Drop a like, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Um, you know, put that notification bell on. You know, see my smiling face when I release a new episode. You'll be very, uh, you'll be very excited, very excited that you did. Thanks again for joining, and cheers.